Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, we're not quite in Vietnam yet. We're actually spending our last night in Laos having a nice dinner. I actually chose to get a steak because they had a very broad menu. They had Italian stuff, they had Spanish stuff, all sorts of things. And I decided to go with a steak, which was pretty underwhelming, but you know what? I'm from Nebraska, it's kind of to be expected. One of the girls did a little bit of research, and so we had a side quest that we kind of planned impromptu. We didn't have a lot of time to do it, so we hopped to Tuk Tuk and took it out of town about 30 minutes, I suppose, to this Buddha Park, which is kind of a touristy thing. It's kind of a mixture of a lot of Eastern religions, uh, statuary and figures, and lots of different beautiful plants and fauna lots of little paths to walk on birds butterflies you name it really nice peaceful place we got there early enough in the morning in fact that there was really no one there except for of course the groundskeepers using uh, weed eaters which is a little distracting but you know they got to keep the grounds looking nice somehow right Headed to Vietnam from Laos, and this airport seemed to be kind of a zoo. When we got to the airport, I tried to convert my leftover Lao kip over to Vietnamese dong, but found out that they would not take them because apparently next year they are switching to Chinese currency and they didn't want the Lao kip anymore. So luckily I only had about $7, but still $7 of kip is uh, enough to fill your pockets, that's for sure. Now, if I would have known that they were going to give us food on this short flight to Vietnam, I wouldn't have bought the pad thai that I got in the airport, which is good, but I guess I still need to get rid of those uh, loud kip, so it became a wash, I guess. Welcome to the absolute chaos that is Saigon streets. I actually really started to love Saigon streets, even though they are complete chaos. And it's really hard as a Westerner to just remember to just walk. First thing we did is go get some money exchange in this little bitty jewelry store that was literally about 10 feet wide. And we went way into the back and I was kind of like, am I buying something illegal here? This doesn't seem legit, but it was totally legit. We stopped at a very famous banh mi sandwich shop and it was excellent. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the appropriate camera, so I didn't really do much recording in there. Actually, I bought the right camera, I just didn't put the right lens on it. So I could have taken a really great shot of my sandwich from across the street, but at the little table they gave us, it wasn't going to happen. Having developed a little bit of an affinity for water buffalo, I decided to order it again in this kind of stir fry form. I'm not really sure what this was called, but it was excellent, of course. Then we went down to basically the party street in Saigon, and it was absolutely crazy. One of the girls somehow talked them into selling us something like 16 shots for a very small amount of money, which made this walk down the street the next morning kind of hurt a little bit. We kind of ran through the city on this Ho Chi Minh mausoleum tour because our tour guide would not slow down no matter what. These intersections are chaos. Half the time, I think we were actually just kind of trying to chase them and keep up with them. Honestly, it seems like the best thing to do is just not look, just start walking. They'll just drive around you and don't stop. If you stop, then you mess the whole thing up. There was a couple times I looked forward and he was seriously like, two or 300 feet in front of us. And I had to almost jog just to keep all of us collected in the same line. It was really ridiculous. I think the best part of this walk was the fact that we, well, aside from burning off last night's alcohol, was that we ran across the Hanoi street train that you always see, and we crossed it right as it was coming up. So we got to hang out for a minute and watch it go by. I don't know why 
it was so exciting to watch a train go by, but it's a very famous thing to do. Usually tourists like line up right along the edges, but they kind of put the kibosh on that. And I think, I don't know, people are probably getting hurt or doing stupid things, of course, because, you know, social media and all. more impressive watching this cool train go by or watching the absolute chaos that ensued as soon as they opened the gate and all these hundreds of motorcycles and scooters and everything just started trying to go through there it's like a big mosh pit on wheels heading to the french quarter now i'm still trying to keep up with this guy and the nearest person behind me at that point was literally like 40 feet behind me i don't know why he just felt like he wanted to run so fast it was really annoying Honestly, the best part of going to Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum was the trip there and the scenery. It was absolutely beautiful with all the French architecture intermixed with the Vietnamese culture and stuff. But the mausoleum itself, eh, I could do without it. It was honestly like lining up for boot camp and you just kind of walked into a dim room. They had him so doctored up, it looked like he was actually glowing. Uh, you just kind of go in, go out, you can't stop, you can't put your hands in your pockets, you just go in, go out, and then whatever. Well, you're in line for probably 30 minutes just to look at him for literally like 10 seconds, which is pretty ridiculous. But And you can't take cameras in. I got my one camera taken away from me. They put it in a bag and then they give you a number and you pick it up when you go out. It's never a big deal, but I wanted to have it because we were going to be doing more things along the way. One thing about Asian cities that still kind of makes me laugh to this day is how everything is divided up by what they sell. Like this whole street right here sells nothing but fans. It's just many, many families all selling basically the same fan. So it's, I don't know, it just, from Western point of view, it seems kind of funny. Nobody could ever tell me. Now I'm not really sure if it was just because he was in a hurry or what, but he kind of took us down this side street. I thought it was a side street where a lot of tourists maybe don't go, which was kind of cool because it was a little more like actually seeing what people are doing daily life. And then we stopped by this tube house right here. This thing is literally like seven or eight feet wide, maybe tops, probably six feet wide. I don't know, I'll draw a box around it, but it's four stories tall and one of the tallest, skinniest tube houses in Vietnam. Smallest house in the city. Someone told me what this house sold for last time it sold, which I don't think was that long ago. And all I can remember is that the number was high enough that as an American, I was still going, wow, that's expensive. After spending the better part of the day speed walking through Hanoi, we took a little bit of a siesta and then we went to the Thang Long Water Puppet Theater. And I'm gonna try not to go on a tirade about this, but uh, you have a lot of different cultures from all around the world there. I didn't record in there, but people would not quit talking. I had an Italian couple next to me FaceTiming whoever is taking care of their house in Italy, real time in the middle of the theater, during the show, arguing with them about God only knows what. And people just would not just be quiet. It is a really cool thing to see and it's very artistic, but it was like being in a gymnasium full of second graders or something. little food tour and food tours are really awesome but when you have the streets that are so narrow like this and you have so I think there is probably about 16 of us on this it's just a lot of people to try and corral through the streets it really was but we tried a couple different restaurants we learned how to make make and roll our own little spring rolls which are really awesome and I really can't remember what these pancakey things are but they're awesome rolled those inside there uh, I can't say enough good about them I could eat these daily
next stop we had was pho and this place their pho was just chicken but you could either get the brothy style the traditional you always see or they had a dry one which is basically just without as much or without any stock i believe and our tour guide was helping us with different condiments this was like a, a ginger and garlic vinegar i believe that we were putting on it and then there were some hot sauces and different things to season it with the french and then like they bring us to my country as well but you know like at that time it's crazy crazy of course the tour took us to a banh mi place but we had had banh mi about three or four times already by this point so that wasn't really that big of a deal and we had already tried like the really famous banh mi sandwich place in hanoi which is banh mi and i think it's number 25 i can't really remember but um it was good i mean all their food is good all the food we had was excellent and honestly one of my favorite ones is coming up You thought it was going to be the massage place, didn't you? No, it was actually this sugar cane water store I don't, or sh stand, whatever. Um, he was actually grinding sugar cane into a drink. And they're just basically just crushing all the juice out of it. And you're just drinking sugar cane. Really good, but it tasted like cavities to me. I mean, this is a dentist's dream. It's kind of funny how completely normal it becomes after two weeks in Asia to watch the restaurants wash their dishes in buckets in front of the store. It's just something you see a lot and after a while it's just like, yeah, they're washing dishes, no big deal. Now here is probably one of my favorite things of the whole trip. It's pandan rice with coconut ice cream and coconut um, sprinkles and there's kind of like a I don't even know what the, the baked things are on there, but trust me, warm rice in the bottom, ice cream on top, absolutely awesome. But after that, I needed coffee as everyone else did. So we went to the place where egg coffee was created and this guy right here, still making them. It's his shop, it's a very small shop and I didn't really know what to get into them. I didn't think I was actually gonna like it, but it's really good. Unfortunately, it was about 105 degrees in the shop. It was on the second or third floor of the building with a lot of fans going, but not the time you'd really wanna be drinking a really thick hot coffee, but it was really good. Two weeks or so into the trip, and it was kind of becoming routine in the evenings to hit up bars. Sometimes we'd hit these ones on top of skyscrapers. Sometimes I'd be in a back alley somewhere but we were losing some people on our trip and we were gaining some new people on the trip so we decided to go up to this one and it was a beautiful view okay i apologize for the juvenile humor but after a number of drinks this sign right here and this sign right here seemed really funny i had to hey thanks for watching everybody as usual don't forget to go down and check the g adventures link go click that i know you want to uh, we'll see you in the next time. We're going to hit Halong Bay, and it is awesome.